In this video, we want to determine the equation of some piecewise defined functions that are graphed for us. So first we're going to decide on a function name. So let's say I will call this function f of x. And then we'll open it up with a curly bracket here. And this piecewise function has three pieces. So we'll be writing the equation for three different pieces. So the first one, if I go from left to right, this piece here, I'll label number one. This is the first function we're trying to write the equation for. And looking at the shape of this graph, we can see that this is a square root function. So down below, let me think about what the square root of x function looks like typically, and then we'll compare that with the function that we have graphed. So for the square root of x, we know that it passes through 0, 0, 1, 1, and then the next good point would be inputting 4, because the square root of 4 is 2. So this is what the square root of x looks like. And now we want to compare this graph with the graph that we have here. And you'll see that we have a reflection across the y-axis. So the graph that actually was presented to us in this problem, it's the same as the square root of x graph, however it's been reflected across the y-axis. So to reflect across the y-axis, we know we're making the x values negative. So to reflect, we would have y equals the square root of negative x to cause that reflection. Now it's also important to check to see if there has been any sort of a vertical stretch or compression. And we need to do that by taking a look at some additional points. So back to the square root of x, in addition to the initial point, which is 0, 0, the next point on the graph would be 1, 1. So looking at our graph, which also passes through 0, 0, that means there has not been any sort of a shift, we notice that if we were to go left 1 and up 1, it does also pass through the point negative 1, 1. And if I went left to negative 4, notice that the y value here is positive 2. Therefore, we can see that there has not been any sort of a stretch or compression. So the first function graphed is going to be the square root of negative x. Next we want to take a look at the domain for this particular graph. And you'll notice that this graph, if I graph it again for you, the x values because of the arrow, the x values go to negative infinity and they come from negative infinity and then the x values stop here at zero. So this is for all values less than or equal to zero. Now some books will just put a comma here and write x is less than or equal to zero. That's one way to notate this. Some books will also include the word if, so that's an alternative. You can write if x is less than or equal to zero. Both are perfectly fine. So next, let's move on to the second piece here. I'll label this number two. The second function here is just a nice horizontal line, and it's a horizontal line at y equals three. So the equation for that line is y equals three. Now remember, when we write this in piecewise function notation, the y is already written here. That's what f of x is. So we don't need to write y again, but rather we can just write the three we have y is equal to 3. However, we don't want the entire line y equals 3. We only want a piece of it. So let's take a look at our graph. We want to start here where x is equal to 0, and we want to end here where x is equal to 2. In other words, we want all of the x values that are in between 0 and 2. So we're going to write that as a compound inequality. So y equals 3 if, and the way I would recommend that you write this is I would start with the smaller value, which is 0, and then I always like to put my x in the middle, my larger value on the right-hand side, and then I actually start with the inequality on the right-hand side. We want x to be less than or equal to 2, and I'm choosing equal to because there is a solid dot here at x equals 2. And then remember, when we take a look at the inequality signs, when you have a compound inequality, they need to face the same direction. 
So although I'm going to put a less than here, this looks like 0 is less than x, if we were to actually read that in the reverse direction, let me demonstrate. So if I were to start here with x and read that from right to left, that reads x is greater than 0, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted the values of x that were greater than 0 and also less than or equal to 2. So we would write it like this. 0 is less than x is less than or equal to 2. Now let's finally move on to our third piece here. Our third piece is a piece of a line. So when we write the equation for a line, we have two options. We can use slope-intercept form, which would be y equals mx plus b. And that's great if you know the slope and the y-intercept. Or you could also use point-slope form, y minus y sub 1 equals my slope times x minus x sub 1. And you could write the equation for the line in point-slope form. So either way, we have to determine the slope first. So looking at this line, if we start at the, the left end point where we have this open dot, it looks like we would travel up a total distance of 3 and write 1 to land at another good point on the line. So that would be a change in y. We'd be going up 3. So our change in y is 3. And then our change in x is positive 1. Therefore, our slope, change in y over change in x, is going to be 3 over 1, or just 3. So we know that this line has a slope of 3. Now, to find the y-intercept, we could just keep counting from the point 2, 1, but we would be counting down 1, 2, 3, and left 1 to get to another point that would be on this line, if you can imagine this imaginary line continuing, if it did continue. And again, down 1, 2, 3, left 1, which would land us here at a y-intercept of negative 5. Therefore, we know that the equation for this line with a slope of 3 is going to be 3x minus 5. And finally, we want to fill in the domain. So we'll write it's 3x minus 5 if, now we look at the line, the leftmost point on this line is this point 2 comma 1, and the x value here is 2. And if we take a look at the right-hand side of the line, it has an arrow indicating that it's going to go in the positive x direction forever. So that's like saying from 2 to infinity. But the way we write that in this piecewise function is we'll say all x values greater than 2. And remember, we're using greater than here, not greater than or equal to, and that's because we had an open dot, so we do not want to include the value of 2 for the line 3x minus 5. Now let's take a look at a second example. This piecewise function also has three pieces, so we will begin by naming the function. I'll just call it f of x, then I'll open up a curly bracket here, and I will work from left to right again. So I'll start with the first piece here, piece number one, which happens to be a line again. So if I pick any two good points that lie on this line, and by a good point, I mean points that have integer values, so no fractions here, and I'll just take these two. So if we count, we're going to be going up one. That's a change of y of one, and to the right, two. So we're looking at having a slope. Up one, right two is one half. And then this line has a nice clear y-intercept here, so we know that the y-intercept of this line is quite clearly positive 1. Therefore, the equation for this line would be y equals 1 half x plus 1. So now we'll go back and fill in the domain. So going from left to right again, we see an arrow on the left, so this is going to negative infinity, and then this line stops here at the coordinate 0, 1, and the x value there, that's an x value of 0. So we basically want all of the x values smaller than 0. So this will be if x is less than 0, 
And again, remember we're doing a less than because we have an open dot there at x equals zero. So there's our first piece. So now our second piece here looks to be part of a parabola. So taking a look at a parent function for a parabola, the basic function is y equals x squared. And if I make a rough sketch down here, we know that y equals x squared will pass through zero, zero. And when I input one, we'll get one. And if I input negative one, I also get positive one. And inputting two will give us positive four. Negative two also yields positive four. So here's our parent function y equals x squared. And I'm putting it here just so that we can compare it to the graph that we have. And you'll notice that this graph also passes through zero, zero, 1, 1, and 2, 4. So this appears to be exactly y equals x squared. There has not been any sort of a, a shift or a reflection or a compression of any kind. So we have y equals x squared. And then we'll fill in the domain, the left hand, or I should say the leftmost point on this graph here is the coordinate 0, 0, and the rightmost point is the coordinate 2, 4. So that's going from 0, x equals 0, to x equals 2. We basically want all the x values in between 0 and 2. So we would write that as a compound inequality, which would be 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. And I'm choosing to include both 0 and 2 because we have closed dots on both of the endpoints of that parabola. And moving on to our third piece, number 3 here, which happens to be a horizontal line. And it's just the horizontal line y equals negative 1. So remember again, y doesn't have to be written because y is f of x in this case. So we already have y written. So we just can write negative one here. And that's gonna be for all x values starting here at x equals two and then going forever to the right. So that's if x is greater than two. Using a greater than inequality symbol here because we had an open dot at x equals two for that graph. 